Welcome back everyone, Patrick here, moving on to another video dealing with quadratic equations. This is actually gonna be multivariable equations because we're gonna be dealing with both variables x and y. So in each of these equations, we have to solve for either y in terms of x and also x in terms of y. So usually we've been solving equations up until this point where we get x or a variable is equal to some kind of number. Well now, because we're dealing with multivariables, we're gonna have x equaling some kind of expression in terms of y, or we're gonna have y equaling some type, some type of expression in terms of x, right? So the solutions are going to be a little bit uh, different when you're dealing with multivariables. But the same process is gonna apply. So if I take this, over here, we got y squared plus 5yx plus 4x squared is equal to zero. What you wanna do is you wanna try to factor this. Uh, first thing, you wanna bring everything over so you have a zero left on one side, and then you wanna see if you could factor whatever's on that left side. So if I take this over here and write it out, let's try to factor this. Now, also one thing I wanna mention, this is kind of in a different format. A lot of times we have x first and then we have xy. You could rewrite this if you want as 4x squared plus 5xy plus y squared, right? This and this are basically the exact same thing, but sometimes it's gonna to be tough to rewrite that if you have like a negative over here, because if we try to bring this in front, you'll have negative 15x squared, then you'll have to take out a negative could get a little bit tricky. So sometimes you might get these variables mixed up a little bit. So I wanted to add some questions where in case you run into that, you, um, you're not too intimidated by it. And actually, you know what? I'm not gonna put an equal zero for now. I'm just gonna work with factoring this. So what we could do is we could try to see, well, first off, we always check, can we take out a greatest common factor Notice between all these expressions, we can't. So let's try to do it with decomposition. So the A value is one, the B value is five, the C value is four. So the AC value is four, right? Four times one. So are there two numbers that multiply to four and then add up to that B value of five? I think four and one would work. Right, so then we could decompose this. like that, and then from these two, we could take out a y, and we'd be left with a y plus 4x. Then from these two, we could take out an x. Um, sorry, give me a sec. Yes, and we'd be left with y plus 4x. And then we can take out a y plus 4x, and we're left with a y plus x. Okay, so we've done a couple of examples before where we factored expressions with multivariables. So if you wanna go back and review those, if this is making you a little bit uncomfortable, highly recommend doing so. But when I'm doing this, I'm assuming that you're fairly comfortable with uh, factoring multivariable expressions like this. Okay, so uh, we factored it. And so, this equaling zero, that's the exact same as basically these two factors multiplying and equaling zero. So what happens here is now, how do we solve equations? Well, we have to figure out when do each of these brackets equal zero. So we can find out when does y plus four x equal zero or when does y plus x equal zero. And here is where the solutions, there's two different ways to write these solutions here. So we could write y in terms of x, meaning that for this first one, we could isolate for the y value. So here, the y is already by itself, so we could bring this over and we get negative four x. There's one solution. Over here, this y is by itself, bring the x over and we get negative x. So those are the two solutions. This is part one. This is one way to write the solutions. Um, y in terms of x. So notice that the expressions are in terms of x. So that's one set of solutions for part A. 
Now, if we were to do it the other way, if we were to write the solutions as x in terms of y, we would isolate for the x. So we'd bring the y over, which would be negative y, then we divide both sides by four. So we'd have x equaling negative y over four. And then over here, uh, the x is already by itself, bring the y over. So we'd have x equals negative y. Okay, so if they're asking for the solutions, um, if they're asking to solve for y in terms of x, that's the solution for part A. If they're asking to solve for x, isolate for x in terms of y, those would be the solutions for part A. So those are the two sets of solutions and that's how you state solutions in terms of multivariables like that. So just be really careful. Usually they'll ask only one of these. Sometimes maybe they'll ask both. Uh, so really understand what they're asking for. But same process applies. You factor, then you just find when do the factors equal zero. And then whichever variable you're isolating for depends on what they're asking for in the question. Okay, so that's pretty much how you do these kinds of problems. So let's, uh, let's do part B here. Um, we'll have 6y squared plus 13yx minus 15x squared. So first thing, can we take something out? Notice between 6, 13, 15, nothing we could take out. In terms of the variables, there are y's over here, but there's no y here. There's x over here, but there's no x over here. So we can't take anything out in terms of the variables. So if we do this by decomposition, we end up with this, AC would be negative 90. So two numbers that multiply to negative 90 and then add up to 13. This would be what? Negative 18 and five? No, negative five and 18, right? Cause this is positive 13, my bad. Negative five times 18 gives us negative 90. Negative five plus 18 gives us positive 13. If this was negative 13, then the signs would be uh, exchanged. But over here, it's negative five plus 18 gives us positive 13. So decompose this into those two values like that. Then we factor by grouping. So from these two, we could take out a y. So we'd be left with 6y minus 5x. From these two, we could take out a 3x, 6y minus 5x. And we could take out a 6y minus 5x. And we'd be left with a y plus 3x, like that. Okay, so now let's write this left side factors into those two brackets. So we can say this, this, when is that gonna equal zero like that? Okay, so we have to figure out when does six y minus five x equal zero or when does y plus three x equal zero. So again, two different ways to state the solution. So part one, y in terms of x. So we would isolate for the y values. So over here from this factor, if we isolate for the y, we bring the negative five x over, divide both sides by six, we'd have y equals five x over six or five over six x, right? Both of those are the same. So that's one set of solutions here. Isolate for the y, just bring the three x over. It's negative three x. Okay, so that's how we can solve for y in terms of x. Those would be the solutions. Now, if we solve for x in terms of y, bring this over and then divide both sides by five. So we'd end up with six y over five is equal to x. There's one set of solutions. Then over here, we could bring the y over. So we'd have three x equals negative y, divide both sides by three, x equals negative y over three. Those would be the two solutions right there. Um, 
for x in terms of y. So notice again one more time, the y is isolated here. Over here, the x is isolated. So it depends on what they're asking for in the question. And then finally, part C, we got 9 over 32 y squared minus 3 over 4 yx plus 1 over 2 x squared is equal to 0. So this one looks a little bit more intimidating because we're dealing with fractions, but it's not too bad. Remember when we did a video where we dealt with equations dealing with fractions, personally what I like to do is multiply everything by the lowest common denominator in order to get rid of the fractions. And between 32, 4, 2, a 0 is like over 1. What's the lowest common denominator? 32. So what we could do is just multiply everything by 32 on both the left side and the right side. So notice here the 32s cancel out, so we're left with 9y squared. Uh, 4 goes into 32 8 times. Uh, negative 8 times 3 gives us negative 24. And then 1 half times 32 gives us 16. We got the x squared, 32 times 0. That would give us 0, like that. And then from here, what you want to do is we can now factor this. The solutions to this equation and to that original equation with the fractions is going to be the same. Now, if you go through the whole process of factoring this, 9 times 16, 144, two values that multiplied 144 add up to negative 24, it would be negative 12, negative 12. So this is actually going to be a perfect square trinomial. Okay, if we factor this from these two, we could take out a 3y, and we'd be left with 3y minus 4x. From these two, there's a negative here, so we take out a negative. We could take out a 4 between the 12 and 16. We could also take out an x, and we'd be left with 3y minus 4x. So and then we could take out a 3y minus 4x, and we're left with 3y minus 4x. So both factors are the same. As I mentioned, it's a perfect square trinomial because I knew the negative 12, negative 12 are the same. Okay, so this factors into this, so actually keeping this equation the whole time. We could rewrite this as 3y minus 4x squared is equal to 0. Remember with a perfect square trinomial, if it's an equation, you're only going to get one solution because there's only one factor. You only have to figure out when does that one factor equal 0. And with multivariables, two different ways to state it. We could isolate for the y. So one way to state it would be bring the negative 4x over. So we'll have 3y equals 4x, divide both sides by 3. So we'll have y equals 4x over 3. There's one way to state the solutions. Or we could isolate for the x, bring this over, divide both sides by 4. x would be 3y over 4. So whether we state the solutions in terms of, or solve for y in terms of x, or solve for x in terms of y, those are the two solutions for part c. So for part c, we first got rid of the fractions by multiplying everything by the lowest common denominator, ended up with this equation, factored this, it ended up being a perfect square trinomial. So we end up with only one solution because we're finding when does that one factor equal zero. But the solution can be Again, isolating for y or isolating for 